So this is a review of the film Wild Life, directed by Paul Dano, who is the actor from... Little Miss Sunshine, he's a really quiet teenager. Like. Absolutely, and There Will Be Blood, which is a movie you have to see with him and, and Daniel Swiss Day-Lewis. Army Man. And Swiss Army Man, which we thought was an absolute yeah. hit. Starring Carey Mulligan from An Education, I think mm -hmm. that was her first hit. Jake Great. Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal, who I was reading. Is it Jake Gyllenhaal? Is it Jake Gyllenhaal, Jake Gyllenhaal or Jake was, Gyllenhaal? Yeah, everybody says Gyllenhaal, so Gyllenhaal. Gyllenhaal. I was reading an article the other day with Paul, uh, Paul Dano, and yeah. he was saying that he met Jake Gillinghall at uh, Carey Mulligan's wedding. I love there that sort go. of That's social detail. Contact. So thus proving that whilst talent is a major aspect of everything that people achieve, so is a bit of luck. So it's also starring newcomer Ed Oxenbold, who That's plays the boy. the boy, who when we saw the trailer, immediately captivated all of us, didn't he? I mean, he had a great face. Great face. Yeah. Um, it's based on a Richard Ford book, and so it's set in Montana in 1960, without sort of giving away too much of the plot. It's the slow demise of this micro family, husband, wife, and son. It was about a family living under the pressures, financial pressures. Mm. What, what lack of money can do to people mm. and what loneliness can do to people. So we established sort of Jake Gyllenhaal as a, he's working in a golf club, isn't he? And he loses his job because he's trying to earn an extra buck by sort of doing, you know, Having minor bets, bets with, the, with the clients. Uh, loses his job and so the family is kind of thrown into sort of a bit of a tailspin. Though we have had it revealed that as a family they have been on the move often. And so at the point that Jake Gyllenhaal is, is fired, and then he's interestingly offered his job back. That's kind of when it starts to get kind of interesting because he refuses to take his job back. What did you think about that decision? I, I thought he was a really good person. His yes. character was a really good person. Yeah. And he said he didn't want to work for people like that because he didn't, he didn't want to be picked up and dropped down. So sure. So at first I saw it as just kind of reasonable. Yeah, and then you had that moment where he was, he was taking quite a while to find a job yeah. and he seemed more like just kind of drinking beers every night and everything and yeah. that's when you start questioning whether he's mm. trying hard enough. You sort of felt there was a bit of a willful refusal, yeah. wasn't there? Yeah, yeah, but then when we hear that it's happened a few times, you kind of get that he's obviously tired of having... Mm. Yeah, I mean, I found it heartbreaking, that whole thing with the job, because you see him right at the beginning and he's and he's shooting the breeze with these guys that he's serving, but then he has to get down, he has to has to clean, polish their shoes. Mm. And, and he does everything with great dignity mm. and acceptance. You start initially, when he loses his job, all you want is for him to get his job back because yes. you know that they're in dire straits. Yeah. But when he refuses to take the job again, I got a, I understood it, but I got a little bit mm, because he also didn't want his wife to take a job. Mm. So then she's trying to get a job. The son's trying to get a job. Mm. So you do sort of think, you come know, on, come mate. on, just to see them through. But you've got running along at this point, having the story, these great fires that are developing on. in the hills. It's set in yeah. Montana. You almost see him falling in love with the idea of fighting these fires because. Yes. It's almost like it was an, an analogy for how everything had gone in his life and that this was his chance to go out, fight something that, that was so mass, there mm. is no way to fight it, mm. and that somehow this would bring back his masculinity, because he's demasculated by losing his job, well, isn't he? Yeah. yeah, I feel like he wanted to be a really manly figure for the yeah. son. Yeah. He lacked purpose. I thought there was that really interesting scene when Jake Gyllenhaal does go off to fight the fires, and there's that scene with the son where he says goodbye, and it was full of that awkwardness I remember having with my grandfather between men and boys. But there, certainly in the 60s, there was an assumption that as a young boy, yeah. you've got to have the emotional sort of hardware of a man. Mm -hmm. And they sort of awkwardly hug. Is there not a hug for your dad? to go off and do something. Yeah. And also I think it tapped in... He needed in, it. He needed it, but it also tapped into something that I think a lot of men don't talk about, which is, and I had this, I think around the time when we filmed in the Arctic, men want to run away, not for good, but men do want to run away sometimes from their domestic situations because they want to... Women they can't. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm not saying women don't, but I think, you know, it, it, it's that thing of, you can kind of always understand why women do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, because, you know, they're having to look after the men, they're having to look after But I think also men don't want to do it because they want to abandon necessarily, but they sometimes do it simply to almost have that primal, it's just me and the world. Mm. It's just me and the world. Mm. And I thought he was, I thought he was very good at portraying that. Yeah. Brilliant. Before we see him lose his job, 
they are a couple that argue, but we see them in love. Yes. And we see that there's a sexual thing between them. Yeah. We see the son sort of looking around the corner, around the corner of the door and yeah. they're like kissing and stuff. And we see her being a very, very good housewife. Yes. Beautiful meals on the table. Yes. You see her doing a homework with her son. She's an attentive mother and mm. wife. She's very attractive. Yes, yes, there's the unhappiness with her financial situation and she has ideas, she has ambition. Mm. And that's very much the setup before he loses his job, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Ed Oxenbold, the boy, what did we think of him up until then? Because, I mean, pretty much he probably has about six lines in the no, entire... No, No, I mean, he, he does have more, but relatively speaking. But he's yeah. a star, he's he a star. Did, he didn't have a lot of lines. No. I mean, for what he ended up, yeah. the performance that he gave in the end was remarkable because a lot of it was just him listening. looking and listening. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, that's why his performance was so good because yes. he didn't have as much like as many lines as the other characters. Yeah. But he gave like an even better performance. I mean, some of those shots where he's looking through the door jam between the two doors and the frame, the beautiful framing of them in the door, and that re that really spoke to me as a child. I remember, I remember observing the adult world mm -hmm. through, especially as an only child, through doorways, always framed. You gave know, me anxiety. As gave a me parent. real anxiety. But gave me anxiety about how how. How adults mm. just carry on with their life, and the children mm. are on the fringes, just picking up whatever yes. the sort of dust of it, just and and us not ne never knowing really how it impacts on them. No, what we saw the point do mostly in this film was listen and look. Well, uh, whenever you watch an interview with any great actor, they would always say that their advice mm. to any actor is simply listen mm. and respond. Yes, and that's what great actors do. They listen and then just respond. Which is There's no acting, no. it's being. For me, a really, really important part of the film was when Jake Gillingwall sets off to the fires yeah. and the boy comes home for the first time and he looks around the kitchen and the kitchen, the meal, the beautiful meal, the chopped apples, the meat, everything, the pastry being made has just been left. That's in stark contrast to what we've seen before, the mum, yeah. the beautiful dish come out. And his mum is lying on the bed, just given up, mm. just totally given up, mm. totally depressed, totally. And it really chimed with me that. Thought, I've had moments in my life where I felt like that was just leave me here staring right. at the wall. Yeah. I just, it was, it That's was just so real to mm. me. And then what I thought was brilliant, I'd be interested to see how it was in the book, was the very next day she got up and she was a completely different person. Mm. Yes. He, you know, he had just gone one step too far. She loved him and moved with mm. him and put up with him and put up with the drinking, put up with him losing his job, put up yeah. with all his needs and something just broke, never to be fixed again. And it mm. was so clear and that was fairly, that was about 35 minutes into the film. I yeah, think. because at first I wondered whether that felt too too sudden a reversal, but I suppose- For me it was so brilliant. No, but you're right, it was the straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah. And, and there was a lot of effort put into telling us that this had been going on for quite a while. What did you think of Kerry Mulligan's uh, performance? Um, I thought she was really good, because yeah. I, I think I've only seen her in, in The Great Gatsby. Oh yeah, Great The Great Gatsby, Gatsby yeah. And uh, I felt like she overplayed it a little bit. Yeah. So yeah. I wasn't too sure what, was gonna, what she was going to be doing. Like, yeah. She looked good in the trailer. Mm. Um, I thought she gave a great performance, but mm. her character, I didn't like her character. You just didn't like I, her? I got that she was a broken person, that she yes. was sad, but she was just she was a terrible parent. By the time that she yeah. broke it. Yeah. yeah. Must have been, yeah, for you as a child that that could, not far off from his age, yeah. that would be like your mother suddenly just no care for you. It was yeah. brutal. There's a couple of particular scenes in this film that really, really, really chimed with my own childhood and <laughs> I found myself crying in this film. Um, and uh, it, I found it almost too painful to watch because when you're a child of that age and the way he was looking at his mum, and to, to most boys, boys with their mothers, their mothers are superstars. They're, 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 they're idols mm -hmm. that they, you just idolize. And, and when he was looking at her being sort of, not poured over, but he could see she was becoming manipulated and that there was a scene with this drinking too, drinking too much and she was flirting with this guy and that whole scene was developing and could feel his anxiety was oh. unbearable oh. in that scene. It was How one of the was most powerful he, he scenes. Suffocated by it. Yeah, yeah. And I thought that yeah. scene was so powerful. So well directed. Seems so well directed. Yeah. Yeah. Because the guy that she, the guy who she was sort of flirting sleazeball. with, the sleazeball, he wasn't just sleazeball no. either. He wasn't he wasn't necessarily yeah. overtly pursuing it hard either. She was offering a certain amount. 
She and wanted it. Just yeah. She needed it. She yeah. needed to have that validation. Yeah. So I was going to say in that yeah. scene where they're at the dinner table at his house, it kind of made him out, uh, look like a better person Who? compared to the mother. The, the guy that she's having this affair Yes, with. yes. He seemed like a more calmer, he, he was calmer mm -hmm. than her. You felt he offered something to the boy that maybe there would be some comfort in this yeah. guy somewhere. Yeah, I know what you mean. But I thought that was incredibly accurate because I remember similar situations where because your own mother is, a, is slightly, un, not unhinged, but is off the rails and kind of going spiraling, you cling to whatever security you can find. I'm just fascinated. I'd love to hear Paul Dano talk about how he got that performance mm. from that boy. What are the conversations between mm. the actor and director? I think it helps that Paul Dano is quite young as well. And yes. he's yeah. also like a child actor. So yeah, yeah, yeah that's play. true. Yeah. Well, if you think about it, I'll tell you the striking parallel is if you think of Paul Dano's character in Little Miss Sunshine, incredibly quiet, few lines, listening yeah. all the way through, and then you look at Ed Oxenbold's performance. Some strange parallels oh, there. Oh yeah, and you just yeah. think of all the kids yeah. in all the yeah. world whose parents have split mm. up and then somebody else comes into the house, mm. somebody else's smells, somebody else's pants, yeah. somebody else's shoes, yeah. and the adults are merrily getting on with whatever it is they want out of the situation and Horrible. forgetting that there's this child yeah. whose life's been... But he, it's the internal devastation, mm. the absolute mm. dignity and control that he had in every yeah, single remarkable. scene. Also, I, I loved how like, whenever the mother would say anything horrible about Jake Gillen, yes. he was always defending him. Yes. Or like if she said something, he was like, yeah, but dad loves that too. Oh, don't, and she's just like, and she'd kind of ignore it. And yeah, it was yeah, just yeah. so heartbreaking. She was hateful, hateful, hateful. to him. Because he was trying so hard to try and get them. And that scene with him in the car when he's waiting at the end of that scene, when she goes back oh, in. Yeah. And she goes back in and we wait and we wait and we wait and we wait. I mean, it's truly, truly powerful stuff. And then of course, without giving it all away, Jake Gyllenhaal comes back and we have a sort of very poetic end to the film and an end to their relationship, don't oh, we? We can't talk about it because you oh have to just, God. you couldn't repeat how it leaves you feeling oh that God. egg scene with that boy. Oh, but hot. enough to say it's a treat, but not in every sense. It's a it? treat. The, the subtle way it's been directed. There's a, often with films you feel that the ending is always, a, it's always an awkward moment for any film is how to end this. And I have to say, I thought the ending of this film was mm. nigh on perfect. perfect. And I've got a terrible problem with endings. Mm. Yeah, because I have a real problem with um, when when films end, they mm. try and close everything. Mm. Too too much. And I really like it when a film kind of ends, not with a cliffhanger, but no. kind of not answering all the... Leaving like you, real life. Yeah, like, like real life, life. Leaving you with more questions to ask and answer yeah, and wonder yeah, yeah. about. Rather than this is what happened and that's yeah. what the rest of my life is like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So in summary, let's summarise and maybe give our scores. I thought this was a really good film. Although it was slow, I didn't... I didn't feel bored at any point no. because of when it, when it was slow, you always felt like it was building to somewhere, and like the nerves you feel in the film. Yeah. So I thought all the performances were really, really good, right down to the old guy. But Jake Gyllenhaal's character, I wanted to like protect him the whole time. Did you? I felt so sorry for him. Yeah. I wanted somebody to go over to him and tell him what was happening. Oh. Like, yeah. No, I loved him. And yet you didn't feel the frustration of why aren't you there? You didn't feel her frustration with him. No, I mean, I, it annoyed me how angry she was with him going out right. to the wildfires because it's like he's still trying to do what he should be doing. He's trying to earn money. Yeah. Although it's not a lot. Yeah, he's like, still trying to take some responsibility. Think, yeah. And I, th I think to fall that out of love with someone that quickly is a bit like, Ooh. you must have been out of love with him a bit before that. Oh, that's interesting. And I thought the, little, the younger boy was absolutely amazing. Mm. I'm sure he'll be in many more things. Many more things. That. It was really, really beautiful, and I liked how simple the storyline was. Yeah, that's what Kiki said as well. The first thing Kiki said when she stood up was, Sorry, what did you think? Know. She said, I loved how simple it was. Yeah, they didn't try and complicate it. No. Um, although a, a lot happens in it, but some yeah. shocking stuff happens, but they didn't try and throw loads of other themes in, like add sure. and stuff to it. Sure. I feel like they were really sticking to something, and it made you understand the story more. And I thought the directing was amazing. Because yeah. um, I love Paul Dano as well. Mm. So, I'd probably rate this film a 9.5. Wow. The only reason it's 9.5 is I think it was a little bit too long. Okay. Quite like a smidge. Yeah, yeah. But I love the ending. So. As a directorial debut, it was an incredibly mature. Lee directed film. I mean, I, I, you know, this this was a film where the, the director was so supremely, as you rightly say, from him seeing them sitting in the diner, confident in his performance, didn't feel he needed to direct them too much. I think he, I think the sense yeah, yeah. of direction was probably one of, 
you know, the authenticity of the story was there. He was working from a strong novel, um, and and the story was very simple. So, you know, he just let the story just do the job, and. You know, his direction and the performance of Ed Oxenbould, this is the arrival of a new, wondrous talent, I think. I think he's remarkable. Um, Kerry Mulligan, who sometimes for me is an acquired taste, I thought she was really good. I, I did wonder whether the, the shift in tone and mood was a little bit sudden within the film. But I sort of forgave, I forgave that, because you, like you said, you'd been given the context running up. Jake Gyllenhaal, I thought was heartbreaking, and I thought it was an interesting film about the sort of the hopes and the desires of, again, of women in relationships and life and men in relationships and life and what are they after and what happens when tragically they don't dislike each other in the end but they don't love each other in the end. And I thought that was tragic to see that played out in the face of, of the boy. Um, beautifully shot, beautifully filmed. Uh, I would give it a 9 out of 10. Boy, it broke my heart in loads of different ways. I think this film is about loneliness. Mm. That's mm. what I was left with, the overwhelming feeling of loneliness of every single character, even the perv, was lonely. Yeah. Uh, Jake was terribly lonely. She, Kerry Mulligan's character, do you remember she says, what kind of a man could leave someone somewhere as lonely as this? And I think it's really easy to underestimate what loneliness can do mm. to a person. It, it's almost like hunger, mm. that kind of emotional hunger, that need to have somebody else. And I think, for me, that's what I was seeing in her. Yeah, yeah. And I think the boy's loneliness was crushing. Mm. It could absolutely crushing. That boy was so alone and so lonely. And it made me scared because I think the thing I fear most is loneliness. And I think mm. it's one of the most underestimated uh, traumas that a human being can go through and of course it's everywhere all over the world so uh, for me that's mostly what this film was But that's about. interesting isn't it and you're right because you felt their loneliness even if when in those rare shots all three of them were together yeah, yeah. you felt how lonely Especially they all were the loneliness when they were on their own and the loneliness when they're together was even more keenly yes. shown I think yeah, yeah, so, you're right. so I think I, I, I cannot believe this is a 31 year old man's first Directing, yeah, yeah. basically. It, I, I mean, what? Where has he brought it from? Yeah. He's obviously an incredibly intelligent mm. man. And Ed Oxenbold. Well, if any young actor mm. wants a lesson in listening mm. and responding, there it is in glorious yeah, technical. Very true. With this one, you've got to want to go and think, and you've got to want to go and like yeah. feel, and you've got to you've got to allow for pace. Because a lot of people, films that I love, they go. Oh God, so long. So, so. If you're one of those people that thinks a film is too long, well, if there's any lingering shots, then this will not be the right film for you. Let's yeah. definitely film it. Film. Don't go with somebody that you think might be a bit yeah. itchy. So I'm going to give it a, a nine and a half to. Yay. Mm. And you know what? To absolutely engage a family mm. of four with an 11 year old as well, included in that, with such a, a such a, a subtle. subtle story, it Absolutely. is a subtle story. Intelligently subtle. Intelligently subtle. Mm. Well, bloody done you. You probably don't care what I think, but well done. Yeah. For more film and family fun, don't forget to click the subscribe button and make sure to click the bell to never miss an update.